Hi, welcome to this video. It is the first in the series of the bronze version of workshop software onboarding. What this is gonna go through, we've created a series of videos here for you, which will help you get up and running with workshop software to understand the various functions and features within workshop software and how you can get your workshop profitable. So this first video is the first in the series and you should watch this from start to finish through the whole series to get a really good understanding of how workshop software works Works and make sure that you get the best of your investment into workshop software. We love the fact that you've come on board. R massive congratulations to you. And we want to get you from where you are today and get your business humming and get it turbocharged. So let's get going. So once you've logged into workshop software, what actually happens is, is you get presented with a dashboard. Now the dashboard's got a number of widgets on it. So you've got things like today's and the weeks and the month sales, some jobs and so on. And you've got some recent activity down here as well. You can see uh, transactions that have taken place. You can get a list of jobs in progress and jobs that were recently completed. So you've got that sort of info. You've also got a graph here. And you note that if you click up here on the right hand side, you've actually got a different types of graphs. So if you want to see products details or certain uh, booking performances or hours worked, those sorts of things, you can get a different type of report up here. So just note that you've got that uh, ability to go through and do that. You can go previous week and you can go to the next week, you know, that sort of stuff. You can go forwards and backwards through the week through that uh, little graph down there. Now, let's just focus on a couple of things here about the usability and the user interface with workshop software. So first of all, the star. In the star action, there are numerous places throughout the system where we have star. And what that is, is a little mini menu to actually do something in workshop software. And I'm gonna show you that as we go through these videos. So in this instance, what we can do is we can actually go and purchase SMSs if you want. So if you wanna go and buy 500 SMSs for argument's sake, you can go agree and go buy and that is the functionality of being able to do that from that particular star action. Uh, there's a couple of other options here. So you've got month to date or the last 30 days in terms of this uh, this report here in terms of month sales and do you want to show it tax included or tax excluded? So uh, you can toggle those things on and off. Pretty, pretty simple and straightforward there. Now a couple of other things with the user interface. First of all, up the top, you've got this search bar. The search bar is super important. If I search for something like Bob, for argument's sake, it will search customers, suppliers, it'll search mechanics, uh, it'll search everything, vehicles, the whole lot. You can actually type in a transaction number. So if you had a transaction one, two, three, for argument's sake, it would find that transaction. In this case, it's found it because it's in part of the VIN, for argument's sake. So it does a search right across the whole system. It's a really cool place to find what you're going to do and what you want to do. And then you'll notice things like here, you've got the functionality of being able to, for example, create an invoice, send an SMS, or go and view their latest invoice or their latest job. Uh, similarly, you've got that with for the vehicle as well, so you can do various things. So if you click on this, it will actually start an invoice for that particular customer, Bob Smith, right? So that's how that works from the, from the searching functionality. Just gonna go back to the beginning again, uh, just to make it simple. I also wanna show you this plus. The plus is a cool place because this is where you wanna go and create a new thing, right? Customer's invoice, customer payment, supplier invoice, supplier payment, you can do them directly from here. Now, as you saw just a minute ago, I can search for Bob here and I can go new customer invoice and that's effectively what I'm doing for Bob. The other option is, is I could go the plus and go customer invoice and it will open up a blank customer invoice and in here I could search for the customer or I can click this plus and this means it will add the customer. So I can put the customer's details in and I can go and add their details into the system there, right? So um, from a user interface point of view, uh, that's pretty consistent right across the whole system as well. So where you click the plus when you're actually in a screen means to go and add a record in. So that happens right across the system. Now, if I were to create a new customer here, what I can do is I can make them an individual or I can make them a company. And you'll notice that this now comes up with a company name field. If I have individual, it's got first and last name field. Now, this is pretty straightforward. You would go and put their details in, save, and you've added a customer. That's pretty straightforward to do. You can make them cash or account. Now, if they're account, it means when we finalize the invoice and 
print it and finish it, it will mean that their their bill will go onto their account and they will pay you later, right? So they've got a they've got an account with you and you and they owe you money. For example, send them a statement at the end of the month, that sort of thing. So that would make them an account. Uh, if they're cash, when you finalize it, the system expects you to pay at that particular point in time. You can actually change that on the invoice by invoice basis as well. So um, that's pretty straightforward to do as well. So let's just go through the actual process here. And if I go, I'm gonna just go search for Bob again. I'm gonna click on create an invoice here. Uh, I've made some changes here. It's saying, do you wanna um, lose that unsaged changes? I'm just gonna say yes. And I've found Bob. Now Bob's got a vehicle, he has this Mazda 3, right? So I could click on this and use that and invoice him in for against that vehicle. I could click the plus sign here and I could add a vehicle in, or I could just not do anything and not choose a vehicle at all, okay? So I don't have to choose a vehicle. So for example, the customer, I might not be working on a vehicle for argument's sake, I can just come down here and go and do at the invoice or the job card, okay? So it depends on whether or not you want a vehicle, you know, most places that we deal with have typically got a vehicle of some sort. Um, and so you can click the plus here, put the vehicle details in. If you're in the United States, for example, and you were hooked up with Carfax, you'd be able to search for the vehicle via the registration would actually say license plate, but you can you can do those sorts of things too. Um, and by vehicle, we deal with all sorts of different types of vehicles. So it could be motorcycle, truck, uh, you know, farm machinery, plant and equipment, motorsports, boats, all sorts of different things and you can set that up in the system file which we're gonna show you in another video a little later. So adding in the vehicle, put the vehicle details in and go save, that's pretty straightforward. You can put as much or as little detail in there as you want, that is entirely up to you. In this case, I'm just going to go and do an invoice against his Mazda 3 just to make that simple. Okay, and then this comes up now with a couple of things here. So you've got the order number. If the customer wanted to give you an order number, you could put the order number in here. Uh, the date of the invoice, the invoice type is either an invoice, a credit, or a quote. Okay, if it were a quote, we can create a quote, save it, come back later, bring it back up. We can change it from quote to invoice. Uh, and then we can go and invoice that customer out. And by invoice, we're talking job card, invoice, uh, uh, basically the same thing. So at this stage, this is effectively a job card. We would print out a job card, go do the work, turn it then into a finalized invoice for the customer. So from a status point of view here, it is actually set as invoice. And this here is where the job status becomes. So it's work in progress. It might be, you know, once it gets finalized, it'll automatically change to finalize, for example. This is where I said just before about the account type. So there, this account is actually set to cash. But for whatever reason, let's just pretend for a second the customer wasn't going to pay us today. And they said, look, mate, I, I, you know, I'm going to pay you next week for argument's sake. You can actually change this specific transaction to account instead of cash, right? And vice versa, um, that works both ways as well. Um, so if they were account and you want to change them to cash because they happen to pay they're gonna to arrange to pay this time, away you go. Pretty straightforward. If you wanna enter in a follow-up, you can put in a follow-up date. So that's for you know work that you're gonna get maybe done at a later date. Um, you can put follow-up and you can click on here and put in follow-up notes and you can type in the notes about what you've done. Just a note there, um, the system will automatically follow up things automatically like scheduled services. Um, for example, in New South Wales and Australia, we do registration due re renewals. In New Zealand, there's WAF renewals and in other parts of the world, there are different types of renewals as well. They are happen automatically. The follow-up date is really there for you to do specific follow-up, a special follow-up. So you might have done some special piece, type of repair uh, and you want the customer to come back in a month or three months because maybe you know the new engine needs to be checked or something along those lines. You got the odometer, um, kilometers or miles, depending on what part of the world you're in. Hours is really there for um, machinery that, that work on hours and don't do kilometers. Um, and then your next service as well. So um, you can have a job status comment. And this is typically why the customer came in. So did they come in, maybe, maybe it was a service or something like that. And you can type a description um, of the actual work that's being done. Sorry, my apologies, got that around the wrong way. This is the description so that you would say it was a service. And the job status comment says, you know, uh, something like, 
I've contacted the client, something about the status of this job. So, you know, called Fred and parts are being delivered, that sort of thing, right? So that job status comment that shows up in the job center as well. Okay, so then once you've done that, in fact, to be honest, normally you pretty much are not going to worry about this, right? So you're not going to go through that unless maybe you wanted to change this to a credit or a quote or something along those lines. You are pretty much going to find the customer, find the vehicle, or even just find the vehicle from, from the start up here. And then you're going to come down into the products and put the products on that you want. So I, because of the nature of me explaining this to you, I've gone through that in the long form. I'll actually do an invoice for you in a second and show you it in the short form as well. So, so what I can do now is if you were integrated with the likes of Repco or Bursons or Ashdown or Parts Tech, if you're in the United States, um, various other integrations that we have, you could actually jump into that integration pull parts and labor back into workshop software. Uh, in the United States, we deal with uh, motor repair times. Complete uh, clarity over that. That is an extra charge for that, uh, but you can get repair times and things like that. So I'm gonna just show you it without that. So I might do something like just put maybe a service on here. So I'm gonna put service labor. I'm gonna charge one hour of it. And in this instance, I'm charging $110. And then I can do something like put a product on here. So. I can put in uh, maybe a miscellaneous product that I might have in the system. So if you didn't really want to manage stock, you could actually put miscellaneous products and just put the miscellaneous and you could say, you know, oil filter or something like that. Now, depending on your, on, on your scenario, there are some people that would say that's not the best way to do it. And I, in some respects, I agree with that. Uh, but depending on the workshop, if you don't have any stock and you're not that worried about stock, you can just use generic products if you want. The alternative is, is that you can use an actual, uh, you know, product, you know, detail, that kind of thing. So if you were going to put in, you know, a DB1095, something like that, you can go and put a set of pads on there, for example, and you can go, in this case, it doesn't exist in my stock file, so I can go and add a product. So if I want to go and add it, I can put in the description and put in brake pads, uh, something like that. I can choose a supplier if I want, so I'm going to choose um, uh, AutoZone for argument's sake. Uh, I can put it to a group if I want. I'm going to put the cost in, which was um, $29. I'm going to put in a retail price of uh, $45 and I'm going to create that product and that product now has gotten created. So it's actually now part of my stock. So if I search for DB10 up here, you'll see it's a product in my system. So I've just added that product into the system. So that's how simple and quick and easy it is to do that. Note that any of the integrations, if you pull the products back across, they will actually automatically get created as well. You'll notice I mentioned the star action earlier on. This star action here has got things like the product details. So it'll show you uh, things like the quantity on hand, you know, the prices and that sort of info. Uh, you can do things like enter notes. So if you wanted to put notes that are specific for either the job card or the invoice that are going to, I'll just show you what this job card item notes. And I'll just put in invoice item notes and I'll show you what that looks like. So if I save that, um, the other option here is to actually change the cost. So if I wanted to change the cost, I could change the unit cost of the product if I wanted to. So if you wanted to, you could come here and you could go SMS the customer. And so you could then uh, say, there might be a template. Have I got a t booking reminder? Um, that's maybe not the right example, but you know you could have a template in here which says your customers, uh, your car is ready to pick up, and I would suggest you do that. We'll show you templates in a little bit. So, um, you know, uh, car is ready, right? So you're going to write the customer a nice note there. You're going to go send, and it's going to go off and send that message off to the customer to inform them that the vehicle is ready. Or you don't have to do that, but that is one option of being able to SMS the customer. What you can do then is either process it now before the customer comes in or you can process it later. We can just simply save this uh, in the job center. You've got the jobs that are currently work in progress and what's going on. So this job again is the job that we've been dealing with. Customer now comes in, I can open up this job again. And for example, I can say, okay, Mr. Customer, your total of your bill is $308. Sure, that's fine. Okay, let's process that. So we click on process. And what this says, it says, are you sure you want to save and process this invoice? Yes. So this is finalizing, finishing the invoice, right? 
Now, because this customer is cash, it is actually now defaulting to a payment method that needs to come up. So what we've done is by default, we're saying the customer's paying by cash, but it could be credit card, it could be anything. You, you can actually set up the payment methods in the system as well. So let's say for argument's sake, they're paid by credit card. We can go process and away we go. Now, just a little note here, we can actually print it as a an A4 invoice or we can print it, if you were selling parts, for example, and you wanted a little, little cash docket that printed to a cash docket printer, uh, you can make it a docket. But look, many of our workshops would, would just use an invoice, only maybe specific places that are using cash sales, but that's just so that you're aware about what that option does. So if I process this, it means that the invoice is finalized. Um, would you like to print this invoice? Uh, I can say do this every time if I want because I probably want to print it every time. And here's the printout of the invoice. So this will have your logo up the top here. It's got your details here. This is all your company details, customer details, vehicle details, uh, the labor, um, that sort of stuff. You'll notice here that this is the invoice item notes against the brake pads. Um, so you've got your total, they're paid by credit card. And again, you've got these notes at the bottom of the invoice that uh, you can go and edit and change, that sort of thing. Note also that there are a number of different ways that you can print out uh, the invoice, and we'll show you that in just a second as well. So for example, you'll notice here that there's no line items. So there's actually two labor items here. You could print the individual prices of those if you wanted to. So there's a couple of different options. You can uh, choose a different way of printing. So instead of breaking labor and parts up, you can do it different ways as well. So there's various different ways that you can print the invoice and we'll show you that in a little bit. Okay, so you could then just simply print that invoice out and away you go, you can uh, give it to the client. The other option is, is that if we scroll down here, we could actually email the invoice to the client as well. So we'll come up with the, uh, you know, the customer's email address, uh, come up with your details in here, that sort of thing, and uh, you can go and send that and away you go. So that's um, pretty straightforward to do that as well. You'll notice now too that this invoice has actually changed color. So it's now brown or, or gray color. Uh, that actually means that the invoice has been finalized. So it's a finalized and finished invoice. You actually can't edit this invoice now. You could void the invoice, which means that you're effectively deleting the invoice altogether uh, if you wanted to void it. But uh, you'll notice here too that this has got the payments against it. Uh, so that's basically the workflow of you know, how you would do your transaction from doing a job to turning it into an invoice, you know, parts, labor, you know, those sorts of things. Please watch the other videos because they all do relate, uh, you know, relate with each other. And so things like, for example, setting up uh, products, uh, setting up your various settings and how the invoice prints and all those sorts of things relates, of course, to the presentation of how you might do an invoice for a customer. So that's the first video. Thanks for watching.